In today's video, I want to show you guys quickly how to do bulk data capturing on Sage Accounting. My name is Andrew Hubri, I'm the owner of S Accounting Network and I've been in the accounting industry since 2008 and I've been working on Sage many, many years. And I think today I want to show you guys one of the tricks that if you do bulk data capturing on Sage especially, and I want to show you quickly how this works, I'll call it the party trick. Um, before I get to the video, just remember to give the video a like and remember to hit subscribe and move it down to my computer. Then I can share guys quickly two different ways of how I can do bulk data capturing on Sage Accounting. Yes. <clears throat> so, for me to show you this trick, what I'm going to do is I'm at the moment just locked into the, um, into the, into the demo company that they've got on Sage. You'll see on the lock-in screen at the bottom there where we'd normally put your username and password in. There's a little thing over there we can lock, in, lock into the, the, the demo company. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into my banking or I'm going to first go to the list of banking credit cards because I just want to create a test account. You know, we're not going to be using their data and stuff. That's a nice thing about the demo company is that they reset their data I think like once every two days or three days so you can lock into the system fool around try different things and then yeah just, just go test the data out so i'm just for now just going to add a bank account and bank account over here and i'm just going to call this a test account <clears throat> so i'm just going to call this test and then under bank name i'm going to call it test as well <clears throat> so yeah no, they typed in the wrong space so bank name so here we're just going to say test if you don't complete both the screens it's going to give you an error message and then you would just have to complete the other one as well yeah so then after that so what's important that when you're going to your bank remember um, by default most people would normally work with bank feed so the bank transactions would automatically import into the into sage accounting but what i'm going to do for this demonstration i'm going to show you guys quickly in by using an, a csv file that i'm going to import so i can just do the demo for you guys so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to um, my banking so if i go back to banking transactions my banking screen itself then over here i'm just going to choose that test account that i created now so instead of working on the national bank current account <clears throat> i'm i'm just going to change the selection i'm just waiting for it to load so instead of that one we're going to be working on our test one so then after this we're going to say that we're going to import the data file we'll import the bank statements the format that we're going to import today is a csv file and you'll see that if you're not sure you can see over there is a little thing over there that you can go watch then they explain to you exactly how to set up that csv file but just remember there must only be three columns one description line date description amount so all the money that comes in positive amounts all the money goes out negative amount so i think probably if you work with csv files the most difficult thing is normally to prepare the file to get it in the right format to be able to import into sage but the easiest if you can if you do work with importers to from your banking to download the ofx file because you just choose ofx import and it just that does it straight so there's no um, data preparation that you need to do but just for the video i'm going to just use a csv file so i'm just going to browse for it quickly what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my desktop because i know that i save it saved it on my desktop and there's my csv file that i'm going to import into sage and now i think as an old file that we worked on i just amended a couple of things so you can see i'm importing it at the moment and just like that you will see that i'm now i'm just waiting for it to load I have um 480 rows or 480 transactions that's imported into it. So remember normally if you work on Sage, you would have to go through these little lines of year by one by one to go do the allocations to say that that debit order, what it was for bank charges or whatever the case might be. But this is what I'm going to show you guys the shortcut now. So what you're going to do is you're first going to search for, let's say for instance a reference. My screen unfortunately isn't very big. Well, they've got extra columns. Let me just quickly just go here and just open this up. Um, just make this a bit bigger so we can have a look at the descriptions. Oh, come on, go away. Let me just quickly just change something here. I just want to just change the columns because we're seeing too many um, columns at the moment. You see, so they've got the columns for region and I don't want to see that at the moment. Um, customize grid. Let's quickly see if the button is going to work. Come on, Sage, I'm making you glitch now. Okay, let's see if we can, if we can, um, 
and make this thing happen. So what, what we have to do is we're going to look at certain descriptions. So if I look at my descriptions of uh, money coming in, let's say for instance I take this one that says director's salary name. So what I'm going to do is the first thing, I'm going to show you quickly the one with bulk editing. So if I go search for director, then you'll see that all the transactions that's got that reference on will appear over here. So what you then do is you go into that selection over there, and then you see over here is the thing that says batch edit. So then the very top one, you change that into the account which you want to put it into. Let's say for instance, uh, it doesn't have a salary account. I'm just going to add an account over here quickly. So let's say for instance, we're going to call this director salaries. And we know that this is an expense account. And then what we do is we hit save. So what it does now, as you can see, uh, that if I make that selection to say director salaries, then it, it does all the transactions at the same time. And what you do then is you say mark selected as reviewed. So now all the transactions with the same reference is inside there. So let's maybe have a look at another one because I know that there were some salaries that inside that's inside there. So if I go to salaries and I go look at this, and then you can see here's all the transactions that's got the reference of salary in there. So normally you would put in somebody's name or fuel or whatever the case might be, but this is now the salary one. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Uh, so remember at the moment, I'm still busy with a batch editing screen. So if I'm finished editing, I have to press that button. It's really important. If you, if you don't do that, then you might end up doing allocations of all the transactions. So I'm just going to keep my batch edit on. And then over here, let's maybe uh, stick them into the same account. So I'm going to say director salaries. And then you can see at the same time, it takes all those transactions. And once it just allocates all those transactions once into that specific account, you see. <clears throat> so I can just clear my filter so I can see what the next one is. So, the, so that is the one way that you can do it is by working with this batch editing thing where you search for a specific reference and then everything with that reference, you, you go to the account, allocate it straight into that account and you just do it straight. So you do have different options as well. Remember that you've got the customer supplier, but so if you've got a customer and that guy always uses the same reference, then you can say it's a customer. And then you can choose the customer. You see it over there, change all those transactions over to, to customer, you see. But we're just going to leave it on account for now. So let's quickly have a look and see what is the next one. You can see, here's a debit order for Absa Bank. So, so the other option that you've got, let's maybe finish this editing over here, is to take the first account that you get. And then what you do is, let's say, for instance, the Absa one, I know was a bond payments, but let's quickly try and find an account that we can put this in. So if I... Let's say, for instance, that was rent. So what you then do is with the bank rules, you see this little button over here is the one where you set the bank rules. So if you click on that button, so what it now does, it tells Sage that every time that it sees that specific description inside the inside the inside the description of, of that imported file or that, then every time it must allocate it to that specific account, you see. So now, if I had to go search for rent, then you'll see every, every transaction that's got the same reference would have ended up inside that account. They need the same markets reviewed. So now when the bank feeds are running, so this is something that you can do if you work on sites every month, we prefer to do it. So every time you log in, you go to the bank rule, set up the bank rule, so that if it picks up this reference number, always put it into that account. And what it does, as soon as you log in, it's already in the right account. You just select those accounts and say Marcus reviewed. So that is also a nice way. <clears throat> so let's maybe take something else. Mm. And let's quickly have a look at payments received. Payment received. I'm just going to search for that quickly over here. And then you can see, um, is it searching? Yeah, so you see over here is all the payments that came into the bank account. So I'm going to use the same same system over here. I'm going to go to bank rules. So let's maybe just allocate this to some form of income. We're going to say consulting revenue. And I'm going to go to my bank rules to say that every time if Sage picks up that reference, payment received, then I must save it inside that account. So you'll see now that all those accounts that says payment received it allocated to that account automatically and the mark is reviewed. So remember then what happens is every time when your bank imports that transaction, it's going to recognize the description and automatically put it inside that account. You see, so that's really, really cool. So now if I say that I want to show all transactions, then you can see that we only have 156 transactions left to review. So then you just go to these ones over here. What is this one over here? So you see this one says salary again. So let's do batch editing again. So if I say salary, and you can see anything that's got to do with salaries pops up. I'm going to say batch edit. This one I'm going to say director salaries. And then it should pop all those transactions in there. 
And then remember now at the moment there's only the ones that's got salary in the description. So I say Marcus reviewed. So now you can see from 156 we've got 114 transactions left. We say show transactions so we can see what other transactions we're missing over there. <coughs> Let's quickly see. Um, EFT debit order, what is this? <coughs> insurance. So now if I go and search for insurance, <coughs> uh, if I can type insurance, insur insurance, <coughs> then you can see <coughs> all the transactions. Come on, Sage. That's got insurance in it. Did I type it right? No, come on. Insurance. Seems like the internet is on record today. <clears throat> but yeah, you can see those are my three transactions. So one or two choices. We can do a batch edit again. And then we say all the transactions that says insurance must go into the site that account. I see we don't have one. Set up at the moment, so this maybe just stick it inside the telephone account. Then you can see it allocates all of those and it's how Marcus reviewed. So the other thing that you can also go and do, so just with batch editing, which is really, really cool. So if you go to your current account, let's say for instance you want to look at um, a specific transaction and you go to a specific type of transaction. Let's say for instance you're busy preparing a VAT and you say for some reason when you were busy processing a VAT, maybe let's say for instance you you took something like lights and water. I see that they've got a lights and water account of here. Then you can go search for lights, lights and water. Then you can see over here it pops up all those accounts you see. So now let's say for instance you realize that oh, you processed this with that, it should have been without that. Then you can do that, you select that. Remember at the moment we're still in batch editing them. So once and one shot you can say no VAT. And then you can see that it updates the VAT on all those transactions with one click. Then you say save. So then it fixes the VAT problem there for you. If it, you realize no, there is supposed to be a VAT on those transactions, then you can say standard rate, and then you do that, and then you can see it's supposed to <coughs> change all of them. Why is it not changing? Oh, I must select them first. So select all of these, and then we say standard rate, <coughs> and then after that, <coughs> you say Marcus reviewed, or you just hit save. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys quickly those two ways. So the first way, of doing batch editing is when you are the first way to do bulk data capturing is to use the batch editing function it works really really well you must just be really careful you know that because if you don't do the search search box right you might end up changing all the transactions in your sage account you don't want to do that the other one that if you work on sage on a regular basis is to work with bank rules because as soon as you set up those bank rules Every time Sage picks up that specific transaction, it's always going to put it inside that account. So you then just go search for that specific transaction, Marcus reviewed, and then just go to the next one. So eventually, remember that eventually over a period of time, you're always going to buy at the same place. So eventually, it's going to pick up those references on a month-to-month -month basis. Then you always just do that. So one thing that I maybe just want to show you guys quickly as well um, regarding batch editing you know, regarding bank rules, as you'll see that sometimes, if you look at like look at some of your transactions, I just want to just get to one um, new transactions. Where's my bank rules button here? And then, if you want to set up the bank rule for a specific transaction, let's quickly see. No, it's not working on this one now. Let me quickly go back to my test file, <coughs> my test data file. So sometimes, if you work with 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 um, with bank rules, you'll find that the description might say um, point of sale purchase, fuel or engine, and then it gives you like a long reference number. So that reference number changes every time, but the word engine always stays the same. So what you then go and do when you set up that bank rule, is you're going to click on the bank rule. Why is it not doing it now? <clears throat> so if I click there, let's maybe just stick this inside of a specific account. Oh, but the bank rule button is not working now. But what would happen is you just go change that the, the, the bank rule. So instead of having that long description with all the digits behind fuel, you just take the fuel part or just the engine part and you make a bank rule that says engine. Every time it says the word engine, you must always put it inside the fuel account. Every time it says that client's name, then you always put it inside that specific account. Otherwise, you're going to have this long list of bank rules, which isn't a problem. But, but quite often with certain types of transactions, there's a date behind that reference and that sometimes messes it set up. So the two ways, bulk editing, just be careful, just don't mess up all your books, but it is a nice way to do bulk editing um, or bulk data capturing. So if you've got like a whole year's worth of stuff, 
you go search for that thing, that's his salaries, pick up all 100 transactions, say batch edit, and all of a sudden you just do all of them at the same time, the other one is using bank rules. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Remember once again just to give the video a like, and remember to hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys for the next video.